Don't draw anime. You need to learn the rules before you break the rules. Well, sort of. Yes, you need to study from real life to build a visual library, to understand how light, form, and color work. But drawing anime, or from imagination in general, is also a skill and has its own set of rules to learn. If anime draws you into drawing, pun intended, that's great. Welcome. And welcome to my channel. I'm Unkempt Snuggle Pepper, and I will be covering how to use real life reference to help your anime piece. So this is a critique from Artcrit on Reddit. And I'm going to treat this page as if it's coming from a sketchbook because there are a lot of different things going on and I'm not sure if they're all tied together other than being the same character. I can see, uh, I assume she's about to hit the baseball and that she's imagining herself reading, which is much more enjoyable to her. That's my interpretation of it. And you just wanted to draw your character in various scenarios. The first problem I come across is that a lot of the anatomy is inaccurate, even for anime. So I have pulled up, we're going to focus on the baseball player. There we go. So we're facing the same direction and we're going to talk about her. All right. So first we see, let's look at how our baseball guy's anatomy is working. So we have the head, apparently it has a great color. We have the head, he's facing this way. His shoulders are up higher because his arms are raised. And his chest is facing away from us. So this is where I'm putting my rib cage. And then here are his hips. And then because he's looking over his shoulder and his elbow is here, it's pulling on his arm as his other arm goes back. And then his other elbow is there with his forearm out to the side. So let's bring this analysis into our baseball player. First, first we have the shoulders are going to be higher. So they're going to hit up here. Then, we have the upper arm, which is a straight line. This curve in her shirt wouldn't move exactly like that. And then here's her elbow joint. And here's her forearm going to hold the baseball bat. And then with her other arm, Right? We have the rib cage there. The arm should be out here and the forearm for shortened because his elbow is sticking out. And then that brings our knuckles over a little bit. So this is going to be the knuckles where your finger meets your hand and her thumb is going to be on the other side for stability. Now let's move down into here. So as we see, he is pulling the fabric up this way. So this extra bit of fabric wouldn't be present. It would all move like this. And then where there is tension, the other side would release it. And then down, then down this way. Uh, this is a weird place to crop the canvas because you're cutting off at the knees, I recommend anytime you're doing a pose like this that you avoid cutting anything off at a joint because then it looks odd. And to have all the way up to the knees but not finish out the pose is also uh, a little unconventional. We, we better understand the pose that she is in We understand that the fabric is pulling up this way and we want to represent that. We also have the fabric pulling in on her arm. 
So this is going to be much tighter since there's not enough fabric there. Also, the, the way these arms are, the bat would actually be behind uh, her head slightly. The baseball bat go goes up over the shoulder rather than in front of the face. So where we have your character reading, the neck is far too long. The shoulders would come over there. About here is where you're going to see uh, the elbow is right here. So this forearm will be slightly foreshortened. And these fingers, uh, holding a book is a little bit different. So there's a couple options. One is that you have the book. And you have your thumb on the other side holding the pages open, in which case your hand, your hand is going to be here, your thumb tucked in, and then your fingers are a bit more spread out to hold the pages, to hold the back of the book. So there's one way to hold a book. Another is that you are, all the fingers are on the cover of the book. So in that case, the hand is going to hold one side with the thumb and hold the other cover with the other fingers. And in that case, I would go ahead and lump the fingers together. Anime is fairly specific when it comes to hands. They tend to draw the whole hand, each individual finger. I'm not sure if I can recall seeing an anime where they didn't draw each finger, especially where you're only showing uh, the half of the body. Marco Bucci has an excellent tutorial on how to think about hands and how to draw hands. Uh, I will try to link it up above. It's one of my favorites. And then overall, um, anatomy wise, overall anatomy wise, your noses are here. Uh, so in a traditional human face, meaning if you were to draw realistically, the nose is going to take up uh, one third, and then one third down is the bottom of the chin, and one third up is the start of the hairline. So keeping this in mind, our nose shouldn't be this far up. It should be down here towards the bottom. And the lips, the lips should be a little higher up. So we have the nose here. This is the part where uh, the nose comes back, uh, there's a slight indention as the nose goes into the brow bone and that's where we have our eyebrows. And then uh, it's interesting the way you've chosen to draw the glasses because they don't look like they have lenses. So uh, as someone who wears glasses, you're going to have the, o the, the bump, the two nose pieces, and if they're reading glasses, they're going to sit low on the face like this. And I think you just need to draw the top line. You can say they're the glasses that don't have the rim on the top part of the lens. And if that's the case, I would draw the bottom part of the glasses and then with a lighter color, uh, maybe not that white, draw the highlight where the top of the lens would be. If they are very nearsighted, uh, which means they can only see close up, I would find a way to, to for the glasses to go around the entire eye. So when someone is farsighted, when they need reading glasses, generally they keep them lower on the nose because you're looking down while reading. However, if you have extreme farsightedness or you're nearsighted, meaning you can only see close up, or you have astigmatism where everything seems blurry, in those cases, the lens are the lens will cover the entire eye. And I think that the first anime character that comes to mind that wears glasses 
is Grell from Black Butler. But their glasses generally tend to be lower and they wear them like reading glasses, which is weird since he's supposed to be nearsighted. Which is just a weird thing that you notice when you wear glasses. I wanted this video to be a majority covering uh, how to look at anatomy and how to incorporate anatomy into drawing. So this is going to be a quick note on the use of color and shading. I suspect that you're not entirely sure where the shadows should go. And that is why you use a softer blend in addition to not having enough contrast. So I'm going to go back to our baseball player. If we have light, if our lighting is coming in this way, we have two shadows. We have the form shadow and the cast shadow. So I'm going to pick this color. I'm going to make it darker and shift towards blue. And I'm going to use cell shading, which is more commonly seen in anime. It's much easier to reproduce accurately compared to a soft painterly feeling. So if the light's coming in this way, I know that this part of her uniform is going to be in shadow. And then her arm, you're correct, has a shadow. Her arm here will also have a shadow. As it bends that way. So these are all form shadows. They're shadows that, that appear to show that it's something is three-dimensional. A cast shadow means that something is blocking the light. So under her arm is going to have a cast shadow. And the back of this arm will have a bit of shadow because it's further away from the light. Uh, as the uniform is pulled this way, we're going to get some shadows like so. And then as we move down, her, her inner side of her leg is most likely going to receive shadow and a little bit on the outside. The inside of their leg is going to, to receive the shadow. Um, and then the outside of the leg which continues with the knee. And if you wanted to go so far, you could even use another color to show the highlights. I also see it in the hair that you don't seem very confident in where the shadow should go and where the highlight should go. There's that, and then we have the shine that goes around the head. You could even go up one, like so. So in review, even though you're doing anime, and even though you have a, a specific style, don't let the style be an excuse to draw something inaccurately. It's okay to use reference, and I highly encourage using reference. In a lot of ways, using reference for things that you draw from imagination will mean finding a collection of references in order to incorporate that accurately into the piece you're creating. And then with styles like anime, they are traditionally cell shaded in order to show where the shadow and light are happening and to make a more three-dimensional form. Cell shading or hard shading is much easier to recreate when animating, which is why we see it most often used in uh, animation style pieces. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give a like down in the doobly-doo or leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns, or if you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.